today we're building a Gridfinity system. You know, the one system to sort them all. See, my problem is, whenever I have a sorting system, it will get everything to look good and in order at once. But then over time, it slowly descends into chaos. I think the main problem for me is that as you get rid of some old stuff and get some new stuff, your system doesn't really grow with you. It's not really flexible. And then suddenly, your perfect order isn't so orderly anymore. And this is where Gridfinity comes to save the day. If you don't know what Gridfinity is, it's an organization system by the mad scientist Zach Friedman. I hope that's okay to say. The whole system is laid out on a 42mm grid like this one. You know, because it's the answer to the universe and everything. And then you just put bins on it. Originally, they were mostly the standard bins that were for screws or other workshop miscellaneous items. But then the community came in and made so many cool modules for amazing stuff. So come on this journey with me as I tame my chaos and show you how you can too. In my mind, there's three levels to a Gridfinity system. On level three, I'll teach you how to make your own custom Gridfinity bins, so stay tuned for that. Level one are these standard bins. They're okay, but nothing special. But also, don't get me wrong, no good Gridfinity system could exist without these. These things are the least effort to make. They're also very flexible because you can use them for a lot of different things. On the flip side, it often feels like you're just making smaller subdivisions of mess. So I think these kinds of modules make the most sense for loose items like my dead batteries or also for items where it doesn't make sense to make a custom module. One way to easily customize these standard bins a little bit is to get the software open SCAD. With the software you can design kind of custom bins depending on your height, the width, if you want them with dividers or with a label, pretty much anything is possible. It's pretty easy and it's how I made this bin for my pliers. But with that we get to level 2, custom community made bins. Because Gridfinity is open source there are a lot of community made bins. And I love this because you can just quickly download a lot of custom bins and modules for so many things. Just search on Thangs, Thingiverse or whatever. The upside is definitely speed because things are just ready to download. The downside is that sometimes things don't do exactly what you want them to. For example this holder from my Rode Wireless Go that doesn't really seem to fit them in any real way. Or you might have things that don't have a custom module yet. And that's how we get to level 3, designing your own Gridfinity bins. This is the best way to get the exact models you want, but obviously it also takes the most time by a long shot. Initially making your own custom modules looked super intimidating to me, but honestly it's pretty easy and I'll show you how. For me it takes like 15 minutes for a not too complicated one. First of all you want to get Fusion 360, the free version is perfect. Also you should download the free Gridfinity generator for Fusion. Now you take whatever it is you want a custom module for and lay it flat on the table and then take a photo that's exactly top down. It's also important to have measurements for reference in the photo. So I have this cutting mat that already has a ruler built in but you can just put a ruler in your photo as well. First you want to take the picture and insert it into Fusion. Now comes the point where you reference your measurements in the image to make sure it's true to life in Fusion. Then use the plugin to generate a Gridfinity bin that's bigger than your object and also make sure it's solid. Now you're starting a sketch on the middle part of your Gridfinity bin and then just trace your object. At the end I usually give everything an offset of 1 or 2 millimeters just to make sure that everything has enough space. Then you just extrude that sketch into your bin and also add some fillets here and there. One last thing that I usually do is add notches so you can grip it with your fingers, but for example with these scissors I don't really need it. Honestly this is a super good and easy way to make your custom modules. And then the more advanced you get with 3D modeling you can do more complex shapes or overall bins. And for me it's honestly really amazing that you're easily able to make custom modules that nobody ever made and that maybe just you need. For example I made this custom bin for my camera filter or another one for a camera tool. If for some reason you want these bins that I made I'll put them on MakerLab and you can just download them for free. So honestly I can only recommend trying it out. It's not hard and you'll have amazing and super custom specialized bins for your Gridfinity system. The really cool thing about Gridfinity in my opinion is the flexibility. Because it's all based on modules, if something changes in what you need to store, you can always just take out one module and then throw another one in and you're just up and running and the system just lives and you're hopefully keeping your order. One thing I have to say though, I feel like this is an eternal project that's never going to be fully finished, but I think that's okay. 
In the end, I have to say I love Gridfinity, but printing a big system is also honestly a huge task. I even spent a whole week to get my 3D printer to print automatically so I could print more Gridfinity stuff. It's a great video and you should check it out there. But honestly, it does take a lot of time to print a full Gridfinity system and it also takes a lot of filament. In the beginning of this project, I was planning to fill all these six drawers fully with Gridfinity. But honestly, now that I know how much time and filament it takes, I think I'm gonna do two or three and then I'm gonna leave it at that. But also I think that's a good ratio of things that are highly organized with Gridfinity and other just random spaces where I can just throw stuff in and that I don't want to organize right now. All in all, the system is a big game changer and I really want to say thank you to Zach for making this. It's honestly amazing. And if you now watched this video and you thought, wow, those time lapses in there look pretty good, I actually made a whole video on how to make really nice, professional looking 3D printing time lapses. So please check that out. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.